On this last Wednesday of the Christian year, our worship begins as we rejoice. Rejoice because the Lord is King. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. And we are here to worship him. And in these Wednesdays, we are thinking of our Eucharistic worship. We've dealt with our gathering into worship and the ministry, the liturgy of the Word. And we shall move on from there today. The background of that thought is uh, it was formed by the prayers and readings that express the ideas of this last week of the Christian year, the end of the season of the kingdom uh, that's marked by the red vestments, the uh, and and the the, the, the festival uh, that has just passed on Sunday when we acknowledge Christ as the King of all. First, we express our penitence coming before God as sinners, as sinners who can rejoice in his power and his loving will to forgive. Lord Jesus, be the King who casts sin from our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, be the King who fills us with the power of your death and resurrection, the power of your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, be the King that sends to us your Holy Spirit to make us grow in love and joy and peace, in goodness and truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray that we may know Christ as King over our lives, over the world, over the whole of his creation. Eternal Father, your Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven to rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Bring the whole creation to worship at his feet. For he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The reading is taken from the Revelation of St. John the Divine, chapter 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, 
great and marvellous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand in, on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvellous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are, their way, are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 98. The response is, Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. The Lord is coming. He comes to judge the earth. In righteousness, he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. Sound and praise unto the, the Lord, all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Pray at all times for the strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Men will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to, the, uh, and to imprisonment and bring you before kings and governors because of my name. And they will, that will be your opportunity to bear witness. Keep this carefully in mind. You are not to prepare your defence because I myself will give you my, uh, my eloquence and a wisdom that none of you, uh, your opponents, will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relations and friends, and some of you will be put to death. You will be hated by all men on account of my name, but not a hair of your head will be lost. Your endurance will win you your lives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The heart of our faith is the death, the death on the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and the resurrection by which he showed us and showed the world the value, the real meaning of that death his victory over all that is evil, over death itself. And the heart of our worship is the sacrifice of Christ as he calls us to share with him in being part of that sacrifice. 
his cross and his resurrection. On our earlier Wednesdays, we have thought about the earlier parts of our, of our worship, our gathering by which we bring together ourselves, and not just ourselves, but our sins to offer them to God in penitence. And not just our sins, but all the things that make up our lives, we bring before God. And very often in, in, in uh, earlier days, Christians would bring symbols of their life or real valuable gifts that represent their offering their life to God. And then we have thought of the Word of God, of the ways in which God reveals himself to us and makes us understand something of his love for us and of his purpose for us. Worship, however, is not just a matter of words and of thinking. It's a matter of what we do to bring our lives close to God and to know that we receive his love, his purpose into those lives. And so we, we move after the ministry of the word and after we've gathered together uh, not only our thoughts but our prayers for the, the, that unite us with the whole company of those who are worshipping God. We, we move to the altar, the first part of our worship uh, for which we certainly gathered round the altar but where we sat each in his own place, the worship being led by the bishop or the priest or elder who is taking the place of the bishop on any particular occasion, uh, leading the worship from his seat, and the lectern or pulpit from which the word of God, particularly the gospel, is proclaimed. Now we move to stand around the altar. And it's very good uh, if worship can be so organised that the whole gathering should gather around the altar, but that's not always, perhaps not very often, uh, possible. Uh, where, where where congregations are, are concerned. But we gather. Now, when St. Paul was teaching people, the earliest Christians, about worship, one of the things he kept on telling them to do was to greet each other with the kiss of peace. And that's been a part of Christian worship, something that we've done ever since. It's happened at various times in Christian worship, but our present, uh, our present form of worship uh, particularly in, com in common worship, uh, sets this moment as that when we share the peace of God. Uh, looking round, smiling round, shaking hands around, even kissing around, uh, the, 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 the peace, the, the recognition that we are all one, one congregation, one family, one fellowship coming to worship God. And then the heart of worship. A wise man of the early 20th century has taught us that we, we, can, we can understand that, that heart of worship uh, as, as a fourfold action. And that's what we're, uh, we're going, to, going to do now. The first action is to take, as Jesus did at the Last Supper. Yes, at the Last Supper. That's when he taught us to worship him in this way. Uh, yet Jesus at the Last Supper took bread and wine. Bread, which we, which tradition says was the biscuits of unleavened bread that had been already prepared for the, for the Passover, and a cup of wine. And the way wine was made in those days, uh, in order to be, to be drunk, it had to be mixed with, uh, with, with, with water. So a cup of wine mingled with water. Jesus took those things that not just symbolize, but are the food and drink which supports our life. And so that's the moment at which uh, we call it the offertory, at which we offer to God the gifts that we have brought him, the gift primarily of ourselves, the token gifts of bread and wine and any other gifts that are handy to be offered to him. We think particularly nowadays of the, the, the gifts of money that symbolise all that we can, uh, that, that we can, uh, uh, that we can bring to, to offer to God. We offer then uh, uh, on the altar the stuff of a common meal, the, the food and the drink, the bread and the wine. And as St. Augustine teaches us, there we are offered on the altar in the bread and the wine. We symbolize the offering of ourselves to share with Christ, to share in his sacrifice. Then what did Jesus do at the Last Supper? 
he gave thanks. Sometimes that's translated as he blessed. Well, for the Hebrews, the idea of blessing uh, was not so much conferring some special gift on the item, the substance that was being blessed, that was being singled out, but blessing God, giving thanks to God for what he had given them, for what that, 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 that gift of his was. And the, 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 the prayer of Jesus, the giving of thanks, is such a blessing, a blessing of God for what he has done. If you've been on holiday to one of the Greek islands, you're accustomed to hearing Evcharisto, Evcharisto, as the, the ordinary everyday word for thank you. And that word, we say it more formally in English as Eucharist, is what is is one of the ways in which we express uh, that idea of giving thanks eucharist the giving of thanks and the, over the the years the prayer the prayer which represents the god jesus giving thanks at the last supper has been expanded and usually has has three parts to it the first part reminds us that it that god is himself and in his creation and his plan of redemption and in all that he has done and w with all those whom he has chosen to share with him in doing his will, he is the God whom we worship. And so we end that, that part of that first part of the Eucharistic prayer uh, with the first uh, of the, uh, the, the acclamations with which the prayer is punc punctuated. The first of those acclamations is age, age old. It's the song which the Old Testament and the New Testament alike and all Christian uh, history has attributed as the song of the angels which they constantly sing before the throne of God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. The, the, the next part of the prayer reminds us of where we've learned all this at the Last Supper when Jesus having taken those elements of bread and wine as a, the, the priests in the temple took those those very items bread and wine every day offering the daily sacrifices Jesus said this is my body this is the new covenant in my blood the words of, of Jesus are clearly sacrificial in meaning and they are clearly looking forward to the, 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 the achieving the completion of that sacrifice of his on the cross and it's showing forth, it's showing forth in the power, the almighty power of his resurrection. So it's, a, it's that moment when we repeat those words of Jesus as the gospel writers and St. Paul have taught us to say when we repeat those names of Jesus that we think of yes indeed these offerings that we have made, these humble offerings, if you like, these simple offerings of bread and wine, of food and drink, are the tokens for us, not just tokens, are the reality for us of the presence who is in our midst, the presence of Jesus. And so uh, the bread and the wine are often lifted up for everybody to see, everybody around to see, however they are gathered around the altar. And uh, very often, uh, in a church, uh, a bell is sounded to tell everybody around what is happening, that Jesus is here. And in the, uh, the 20th century, we've learned to add the next acclamation at that point, the acclamation uh, that has four different forms in our common worship, which we add at that point when we have looked up and seen the symbols which have become the reality of Christ's presence with us. And in the third part of the prayer, we remember that it is the wholeness of his sacrifice that we are celebrating. His death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, his, sh uh, his sending forth of the Spirit and the life of the Church which lives out that sacrifice, that love, through all history and through all eternity. And the final acclamation with which we end that prayer is the great Amen, the thunderclap Amen, as one of the great saints has described it, the, the thunderclap in which we all acknowledge together that we are one and that we have said the great yes, the great Amen, the 
which is what uh, I mean means in Hebrew the great yes the great yes to God and to what he has done for us and what he calls us to share with him there we are then there we are one with Christ in our midst and how how can we respond to that we have focused all that we have we have thought about all that we have done we have focused into that that moment and that that that's that spot on the altar where the bread and wine that we think of now as the body and blood of Christ as uh, Queen Elizabeth the first taught us to in the, one of her famous uh, quotations uh, we, 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 we have have assured of God's of Christ's presence with us so what is the first thing we can do as the fellowship of Christ the family of Christ the brothers and sisters of Jesus the children of our Heavenly Father well we can say together the words that Jesus himself has taught us to say and so we complete that prayer of Jesus that giving of thanks by saying together standing around the altar perhaps with our hands stretched out in token of the completeness of our offering of ourselves to God to be part of that sacrifice we say the great prayer our Father in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen let us pray for all those over whom our Lord Jesus Christ rules as King. We pray to the Lord for his church, for that part of it that we belong to, for Bishop Andrew as he leads us, Bishop Joe too. And as we look across the diocese today, we pray for the parish of Christ Church Woking, for the parish priest there, Adrian Beavis, and for the ministry to the town centre of Woking that's based on those magnificent church buildings there. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray to God for our government, leading us into a new phase of our response to the pandemic. As we pray for all the nations of the world, we pray particularly for those who are suffering, as well as the pandemic, from the terrible violence and destruction that afflicts so many places in the world. We think, for example, of Syria and of Yemen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray to the Lord for the sick, for those suffering in the present pandemic, for those who are suffering from other illnesses, perhaps long-standing illnesses that it's difficult to find treatment for uh, at this time of difficulty. We pray for those who find that they are threatened not just by illness, but by loss of livelihood, by difficulty in their family ties. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And as we pray for the whole church in the next world as well as this, we pray particularly for those who have been taken through death by this present pandemic, those who've died perhaps in terrible distress. We pray too particularly for those who are close to us across on the other side of death. Grant them, Lord, eternal rest and let them live forever in the radiance of your light. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we bring these prayers to God, and we know that they come not just from us, but from the whole company of God's people, from Mary, the Virgin Mother of the Lord, from Joseph, her husband, from the apostles and martyrs, from Catherine of Alexandria, martyred in the fourth century and from Isaac Watts who has inspired Christ English speaking Christians by the, uh, the hymns he wrote from his time in the 18th century and from all the saints. So merciful Father accept these prayers for the sake of your Son our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. 
in praying to God, we acknowledge our union with Christ by sharing with him the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We cannot just now know the presence of Christ in the sacrament of his body and blood, but we can know it in a moment of devotion as we remember that he has promised to be with us in spiritual communion. O blessed memorial of our living Lord, who living bread to all doth ever afford, O may our souls for ever feed on thee, and thou, O Christ, for ever present be. The Lord be with you. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. As we go on our way, let us know our Lord hidden not just in symbol in his sacraments, but in our, our hearts as we, as we know him, the Lord we love. Mm -hmm.